Hey everyone, welcome once again back to Science in 10. So in the last video, we described rocks as an assemblage of minerals. But how do minerals actually fit or form together to produce rocks? Let's take a dive into the ways that Earth materials cycle throughout the Earth's crust and upper mantle. The rock cycle. I'll quickly point out here that this video won't be super in-depth as to specifics with respect to how the different types of rocks form. Rather, we'll just do a quick overview. More details and specifics to come in future videos. Let's begin by imagining a melt, a package of liquid rock within the Earth's crust or at the surface. If the melt is inside the crust, we call it magma, and if the magma <coughs> makes its way to the surface, we call it lava. Of course, the upper parts of the Earth are too cold and too poorly insulated to allow a melt to exist as a liquid for very long. And over time, these melts will crystallize into igneous rocks. The term igneous literally comes from the Latin of fire, which is a pretty good description considering how some igneous rocks form. In general, we will use the term crystallize to represent the process of unassociated atoms within a melt bonding together to form molecules that will eventually grow to form the individual mineral grains, the crystals, that are present within igneous rocks. The term cooling isn't quite adequate. Yes, the melt is becoming colder over time, but that particular term doesn't fully describe the whole crystallization process. When a melt crystallizes within the Earth, the resulting igneous rock is classified as intrusive, meaning it formed within the Earth's interior. If the melt works its way to the surface and crystallizes as a lava, these igneous rocks are extrusive, forming on Earth's exterior surface. Hey, now we have a legit rock at the Earth's surface, though we're nowhere near finished yet. As soon as a rock is exposed at the surface, it is subject to weathering physical and chemical processes that break down a rock into smaller pieces. Products of weathering processes, often loose, smaller rocks, are called sediment. Sediment comes in all shapes and sizes, from giant boulders all the way down to microscopic clay or dissolved bits of rock in an aqueous solution. One thing that all sediments have in common, though, they're all mobile, meaning that they can be transported by running water, wind, ice, or just plain old gravity. Sediments are transported from where they form until the energy of whatever method is transporting the sediment isn't enough to move the individual pieces. At this point, the sediment pieces are deposited or dropped off. Over time, in environments such as streams, lakes, oceans, or large basins, Thick stacks of sediment deposits pile and pile up, compressing and compacting the sediment at the bottom of the pile. This compaction also cements the individual pieces of sediment together in a process of lithification. Lithos coming from the Greek word for rock. Hey, remember the lithosphere? And the Latin suffix ific, meaning becoming or to form. Once the sediments have completely lithified, they are now sedimentary rocks. Now let's suppose that we take the sedimentary rock and continue to bury it deeper and deeper and deeper within the crust, and maybe subject it to some pretty intense pressures associated with a tectonic convergent boundary. At greater pressures and or temperatures within the crust, the mineral assemblage in the rock will change. Many minerals that form at or near the Earth's surface are not stable at conditions present deep within the crust. These intense pressure and temperature conditions will cause the minerals to change, to metamorphose into new minerals. This process of metamorphism produces, you guessed it, metamorphic rocks. Minerals present in metamorphic rocks record the pressure and temperature conditions within the earth where the rock formed, essentially acting as a barometer and a thermometer for the earth's interior. But what if we keep heating up a metamorphic rock? Well, we get to a point where all the minerals composing the rock would begin to melt. And now we have a magma, and we can start the rock cycle all over again. But I need to stop right here. We've just described the rock cycle as unidirectional, with one type of rock only turning into another and so on. In reality, the rock cycle describes how different materials cycle through being different types of rocks, melts, or sediments over time. 
A sedimentary rock can also be weathered into more sediment and lithified to produce a different type of sedimentary rock. Metamorphic rocks can also be weathered into sediment and then become sedimentary rocks. Metamorphic rocks can also be metamorphosed again into different types of metamorphic rocks. Of course, we can also metamorphose igneous rocks. And igneous rocks can potentially be remelted. What we really need to do is rename this whole thing the rock recycle to be a little bit more accurate. In the next few videos, we'll visit specific processes that form and properties of igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic rocks. So, stay tuned.